the triangle choke. A submission where you trap your opponent's arm and neck between your legs by locking your legs in the shape of a triangle. Then you squeeze to block off their arteries, preventing blood from going to the brain. You can configure your legs in a large variety of ways. Some examples are the rear triangle, side triangle, and reverse triangle, the arm triangle choke. In this, you use your bicep to pressure into one of their arteries and force their arm into the neck to close off the other. It's a very reliable submission because you can finish it while maintaining top position. The armbar. For this submission, you immobilize their shoulder using your legs, then hyperextend their arm by pulling their wrist down and using your hips as a fulcrum, putting immense pressure on the elbow. The knee bar. A submission where you hyperextend the leg. In this submission, you attach your legs at their hip, then pull down on their ankle while thrusting your hips forward. Once again, using your hips as a fulcrum, but this time to break their leg. The Darce Choke. A choke favored by those with long arms. You create a triangle around their head and arm using your arms, with the lock being on the side of the neck. You then close off the space around the neck, constricting both arteries and getting the tap. The Anaconda. It's like the Darce Choke, except you lock your arms on the side of the shoulder, usually performing a gator roll to do so. The Straight Armbar. It's an armbar, except the position of your body is reversed. With this submission, you isolate their wrist with your head and shoulder, then use your elbow or forearm to hyperextend their elbow. The rear naked choke. The name derives from the fact that the choke is performed from the back without the use of the gi. With this submission, you lock your arms around their neck, then squeeze to close off both arteries. This submission is the strongest one in all of grappling because it takes advantage of the body's inability to defend itself from attacks from behind. Guillotine choke. A submission often used to defend takedowns. With the guillotine choke, you put your opponent's head in your armpit. Then you lock your arms in a variety of configurations to put pressure on their windpipe or arteries, and eventually put your opponent to sleep. The strongest variety is the high elbow guillotine because it puts pressure directly on the artery. The north-south choke. A choke performed from, you guessed it, the north-south position. Popularized by jiu-jitsu legend Marcelo Garcia. The heel hook. One of the most devastating submissions in jiu-jitsu, the heel hook aims to tear apart the ligaments in the knee. This is done by connecting your legs at your opponent's hip, then immobilizing their knee by bridging in. Once this is accomplished, the knee is over-rotated by rotating the foot, causing devastating damage to the knee. The Kimura. Another twisting lock. With the Kimura, the aim is to over-rotate the shoulder. This is done by locking your hands in a figure four grip, then bringing their hand behind their back. This can be done from a large variety of positions, and since the shoulder is the most complex joint in the body, the breaks are some of the most devastating. The Americana. Like the Kimura, the Americana aims to over-rotate the shoulder with the use of a figure four grip. However, instead of bringing their hand counterclockwise, it brings it clockwise instead. This tends to be less effective than the Kimura, but it's devastating nonetheless. The Omoplata. A submission that intends to over-rotate the shoulder the same way as a Kimura, except it's done with the legs. The weakness of this submission is that the defending person is often able to roll to relieve pressure. The Toe Hold. A twisting lock performed by grabbing a figure four around the foot and rotating the toes to cause damage to the opponent's foot and knee. The straight ankle. A submission that intends to hyperextend the ankle by putting pressure on the opponent's toes with your armpit. It uses the form as a fulcrum which the ankle is then hyperextended over. The buggy choke. A choke performed from the disadvantageous position of bottom side control. With this choke, you trap your opponent's head and arm in between your arm and leg. Then, constrict their arteries by closing off all the space. This choke tends to be particularly susceptible to slams. The mirror lock. A submission that turns the elbow in an awkward direction, similar to that of the Americana. This submission is performed when someone pulls out of an overhook. Because of the lack of control involved with the submission, it usually has to be formed very quickly to be effective. The electric chair. Also known as the crotch ripper, this submission intends to force the opponent to do a split, causing immense pain in the groin region. The twister. A submission popularized by Eddie Bravo. This submission intends to damage the opponent's spine with a twisting motion. The can opener. A submission that's often looked down upon for being cheap. The can opener aims to damage the spine by pulling the opponent's head in, causing their spine to bend too far inward. The Boston Crab. A submission that intends to bend the spine too far backwards, known for its similarity to the Walls of Jericho from WWE. This submission has a strange history that I'll explain after talking about the sponsor of this video, X Marshall. X Marshall is a jiu-jitsu clothing brand that sells high-quality rash guards with all different kinds of designs. Their rash guards are genuinely the best I've ever worn when it comes to durability and fit. For most rash guards, after a while the seam starts coming out, but that's never happened to me with them. But not only do they have rash guards, they also have shorts, skis, mouth guards, 
and basically anything you need for jiu-jitsu. So check them out with the link in the description. You can use the code JOSHRICH for 15% off. And back to talking about the Boston Crab. The most well-known instance of the Boston Crab being hit was in a fixed MMA fight. You can tell by the way this guy decides to just lay on his belly and hardly defend. The submission still works, but you have to be way better than the person you're hitting it on. The calf slicer. A submission that tends to rupture the calf by placing the shin behind it. Then compressing the calf by grabbing the hips and hipping in. The bicep slicer. A submission that tends to rupture the bicep by placing a forearm on it. Then you can use your legs to compress the bicep, causing a lot of pain and potential damage. The brato plata. A submission that targets the shoulder. It's done when the opponent's hand is trapped in between your legs, allowing you to turn their arm and apply pressure to their shoulder. The trico plata. Similar to the brado plata, except your other arm is weaved through. Von flu. A counter to the guillotine choke. While trapped in the guillotine, you drive your shoulder into their near side artery, restricting blood flow to the brain. The wrist lock. A submission that tends to damage the ligaments in the wrist by bending it too far, usually done with the use of a figure four. Ezekiel choke. To do this submission, you lock your hands the same way as you do for the rear naked choke, except from the front, using your hand and bicep to get the submission. The prove it necktie. A submission from the front headlock position that involves locking your arms around your opponent's head and arm, then bringing your leg over their head to push their neck into the lock of your hands and apply pressure to the arteries. You'll often bring your other leg over your opponent's back to stop them from rolling as well. The Gogo Plata. A strange submission that's performed once the shoulder is isolated. In this, you use your foot and shin to apply pressure to your opponent's neck and get the submission. A Steema Lock. A submission where you over-rotate their foot inward. Like the Mirror Lock, this submission often lacks control and needs to be completed quickly. The Aoki Lock. Similar to the Steema Lock, except the toes are rotated outward. This submission comes on very fast and can do devastating damage to someone's knee. The Z-Lock. A hip lock where you control both your opponent's legs and push up on their foot, putting pressure on their hip and knee. Because you can finish this submission while controlling both of your opponent's legs, it's very hard to defend. Smother Choke. A choke often preferred by larger grapplers. The smother choke intends to prevent breathing by smothering the opponent with the athlete's chest. Chest Compression. Unlike other chokes, the chest compression intends to stop the opponent from breathing by compressing their chest, preventing their lungs from expanding. Because of this, it often takes longer to finish when compared to a blood choke. Does every submission that can be completed without the gi explained? Let me know if I missed any, and if you enjoyed, make sure to subscribe, and if you're looking to buy rash guards, check out X Marshall in the link down below.